How's everybody doing this morning? Good? Oh, come on, 945. How's everybody today? Come on. Let's be excited. I'm excited and honored to be able to be uh, delivering, if you will, the third week of He Shall Be Called. Uh, can you help me do this really quickly and welcome everyone who's watching online and in the room for the first time? Let's celebrate them. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> Hey, also, I just want to thank you as part of the staff here at Journey for believing in the vision and uh, and also following what God has called us to do and 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 uh, in our giving and our tithe. And so uh, I know that you've been updated on that, but I, I wanted to bring to you that we've raised as a church or given to missions for our next year's budget uh, over one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. So that's pretty incredible. Come on, man, that's insane. So we get the opportunity to love people in our backyard and internationally. And you guys need to understand every time someone's life has changed, you're a part of that. And so thank you so much. Uh, like Pastor Mike said, that money goes 100% goes to missions. It does not go into the pockets of us. It goes to missions and missionaries and people and families all around the world. Um, we are in the series, He Shall Be Called. This week, we're going to be talking about Everlasting Father. Um, you've heard from Pastor Mike over the last couple of weeks as he's been talking about the names of Jesus in this passage of Isaiah chapter 9. And so um, we're going to be talking about Everlasting Father today. He'll finish up next week, Prince of Peace. So let's do this. Let's pray, and we're going to jump in. You ready? Here we go. God, we are so thankful and grateful for uh, our first service and the gospel going forth in that service. Uh, we're praying for the same here, God. We're praying as it goes forth, God, that it uh, would be life transforming. That we would take a deep breath right now <clears throat> and recognize this is about you, your son Jesus. That this whole season is about Jesus and the birth of a Savior that would come to change the world, change lives uh, for thousands of years to come. Father, we are uh, thankful that we get to sit in here and watch online in freedom hear about your gospel. Now, God, as we hear it, we ask that it transform us, God, that we would carry it, not leave it here, but carry it with us and impact those around us for the kingdom. In your name we pray. Everyone said amen. So we're talking about everlasting Father. Before we do, who loves Christmas? Anybody love Christmas? Anybody in here? Yes, you love Christmas? Come on. I love Christmas. Uh, some of, one of my favorite parts of Christmas is, uh, is the Christmas music. Do you guys enjoy Christmas music? I mean, we turn it on. It's already going in our house, you know, November 30, 30th. Like, we're excited about Christmas. Uh, one of my favorite songs, I don't think it's Christmas unless I hear the song, but uh, is, is uh, Last Christmas by Wham. And so, um, number one... It happened in the first service. Y'all being judgmental. Why did everybody get so quiet when I said wham? What's y'all's problem? You got a problem with wham and last Christmas? Last Christmas I gave him my You know the song. You're singing it. All right. Watch it now, people. It's a great song. It's a great tradition around my house. And uh, I can't help that I'm just drawn to it. So... Uh, I love Christmas. I love Christmas music. Uh, I love the food. I love the season. I love the opportunity to to worship our Savior and the the, uh, the thing that transformed the world, transformed my life as the birth of a Savior. Um, but also understand that Christmas is not great for everyone because of maybe a family member has passed or Christmas has never been great in your family for one reason or the other. Regardless, good or bad, I want you to know that I love you and we're excited about Christmas Eve services coming here next week. And I'm excited to talk about Jesus today and the Everlasting Father. And um, I'm praying and believing that God's going to encourage you this morning. Um, we're going to jump into what I would call our series verse that we've been talking about each and every week found in Isaiah chapter 9. This is what it says. We're going to break it down a little bit today. Uh, it says, For to us a child is born, to, a, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And like I said, Pastor Mike is going to pick up Prince of Peace, finish out the series Prince of Peace next week during our Christmas services. Um, 
This verse is pretty important because Isaiah is talking to us about the future role and impact that Jesus would have on the world and eternity. He's also talking to the divine nature of who Jesus is, which is important to us if you are a follower of Jesus in the room or online, because a lot of the world believes that Jesus was not a real person. Or maybe he was just an ordinary man, or maybe he was just a religious leader, just a good person doing good deeds. That's all that he was. But as a follower of Jesus, we understand that he is God in human form. And so that's important to us to recognize what Isaiah is doing here. Now, you may be wondering, how can Jesus, the Son of God, be called an everlasting father? Because that can be confusing if you don't understand what Isaiah is saying here. But Jesus made it very, very clear in the book of John throughout the Gospels that he came to reveal the Father. So in John chapter 14, we're going to look here in just a second, um, we have Jesus and the disciples, and they're having conversation, and they're talking, show us the Father, I'm going to the cross. All of these things are happening, and what's really funny about the disciples, and help, I hope this helps you, is that these guys did ministry with Jesus for three years, and they still ask dumb questions, Okay. And so if you ever feel like, hey, man, I just don't know. I don't know Jesus. I feel like I'm all alone. Like I, don't, I feel like I'm far from him. They're, they're on top of him, and they don't know him sometimes. So give yourself some grace. And so Jesus and Philip, one of the disciples, are having a conversation. And um, in my opinion, Philip kind of puts his foot in his mouth. Okay, so this is what it says. It says, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus replied, I have been, have I been with you all of this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Now the punctuations at the end of a sentence is pretty important. Jesus says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So I don't know if he's angry or like upset. I I don't know, but it does seem like he's a little frustrated. Dude, are you not? What's your problem? Right? Like, so you've been with me. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Um, do you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. And so what Jesus is saying is that I am the visible, tangible image of the invisible God. That's what Jesus is telling Philip and us today in that verse. He is the complete revelation of God in human form. And so what you have to understand, what he's trying to tell Philip, Philip's saying, let me see the Father. And Jesus is saying, if you see me and know me, you know the Father. You know God. So why are you asking these questions? You've been with me. You know who the Father is. And so Jesus makes it very, very clear. So back to Isaiah chapter 9. I wanted to unpack just a few verses, excuse me, a a few words uh, in the beginning of this verse. For to us. For to us. What's pretty incredible is in the book of Isaiah, what makes the Bible so incredible is that this verse was written down 700 years before the birth of Jesus. 700 years before the birth of Jesus. That's why we believe we can trust the Bible for what it is. Because 700 years before the birth of Jesus, Isaiah gets a revelation from God, directly from God, writes it down. 700 years later, Jesus is born and nails it to a T. And through Christ Jesus, God would fulfill the promises he made thousands of years ago to fix what is broken. And that would come through Jesus. That's why the Bible is incredible. And if you, at the beginning of this passage, like we just said, it says, for to us. That's where I want to stop. For to us. Here's what's incredible about us. Isaiah could have said a person. He could have said a, 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 a certain tribe. He said, for to us. In, 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 in my mind, he's meaning for to us. Jesus is for everyone. Jesus came for everyone, for to us. For to us a Savior is born. And so it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your rap sheet. It doesn't matter the family you come from. It doesn't matter your race. Jesus is for you. For to us. For to us what? For to us a child is born and a son is given. Now when you read that, it could be kind of confusing. Jesus was already a son. 
He was and is the eternal son of God. So he didn't come to earth and become a son. He already was a son. He came to us as an infant, as a child. He came to us as a savior. And he chose that. And for some unknown reason, God chose to send Jesus as a child, to send himself in human form. He could have came as a warrior, a giant. He could have come as a full-grown man, hopped on the cross, and gotten it over with. But yet he chose to come in one of the most vulnerable states, a baby. And his mother and his father would have to love him. He would have to trust and love them and nurture him into a grown man. Man, Jesus chose to live his life this way so that we could receive something from him that would change our life. A son is born, a child is born, a son is given. Why? So that through him we become sons and daughters of the living God. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Here's what I love about the life of Jesus. Um, It clarifies who God is. He makes very clear who God is. If every question you've ever had about God, you look for the answer through the life of Jesus because Jesus was the fulfillment of God. In fact, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, this is what it says. It says, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In chapter 2, it says, For in Christ lives the fullness of God in human body. This is why we worship him. This is why we adore him. This is why we gather together to worship him. Because everything about him points back to the fulfillment and the promises of God. Jesus represents both God and man. man. And when sin separated us, he put us back together again. Through a relationship with him. He is an everlasting Father. This is why we worship Him. Now, I love the phrase everlasting Father because it's everlasting. Like It's not like a warranty that runs out after 10 years or 2 months or 90 days. It's everlasting Father. And if you've ever had a warranty on anything, it runs out at the worst time possible. A couple of years ago, I put four new tires on my truck uh, several years ago. And I had like a six-month warranty on these tires. I thought, well, that's great. That's awesome. Cool. So I go about my life. Well, uh, a few months later, I'm at a drive-thru at a restaurant and pull up to the window to pay. And the guy goes, hey, your tire is hissing. And I open, and there's this just metal gash in my tire. And it is going flat by the second. And so I take it into the shop that gave me, put on the four tires originally. And... um. They say, hey, Mr. Mess, we'll get it taken care of. They get it up on the rack. They get the tire replaced. And I go on about my business for the day. I come back at the end of the day to get my truck. And he goes, hey, Mr. Mess, we're ready. Uh, and you, uh, it, the, the total is going to be $320. Say, huh? Uh, I have a warranty. And he goes, yeah, you, you did have a warranty. I said, did? <laughs> Past tense. Mm-mm. Listen, I had a warranty on these tires. He goes, I, I, I understand Um, but unfortunately your warranty ended yesterday. (laughs) Oh, how many hours are in a day? Oh gosh, what? (laughs) Why does that always happen when the refrigerator breaks? You got a two year warranty and it's not usable anymore because it ended yesterday. That happens all of the time. But what's incredible about Jesus and his promises is that his love for us never runs out. It's not a warranty that can run out, right? It's an everlasting warranty. Listen to me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His love for you is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It won't run out. It doesn't have a stipulation. And after 20 years, it won't change. He wants to show you the true love of an everlasting father. That's what's incredible about that phrase, everlasting father. But the word father... For a lot of you, it means nothing. Or maybe it's tied to something hurtful. Maybe there's a good, there's a bad, and an ugly when it comes to that word father. For me, uh, my dad, the first eight years of my life, my dad was an addict. 
And so for eight years of my life, my dad wasn't really around. But now I'm 38, and for the last 30 years, he had given his life to Christ, and he has been the father that we needed, and the dad that I needed, and the father and the husband that uh, my mother and uh, we needed, and he's been so good to our family and to my children. So that's a good story. A lot of you probably have a good story. Some of you may have a bad story where your dad passed away at a young age and you never really got to know him. And you're not really hurt by it, but you wish at this point, but you wish. And maybe you never had anybody replace that father figure in your life. But then there's the ugly, right? There's the ugly where you had a verbally abusive, physically abusive father. You had a father that walked out on you at three years old and you've never seen him since. And so this word father means nothing to you. All it does is bring up bad thoughts. But I don't know what your relationship on earth is like with your father. But here's what I know. In a relationship with an everlasting father, that relationship comes with a love that never fails, that never gives up, and you have never experienced before if you are not in a relationship with him. And it does not expire, and it does not end, and he loves you just the way you are. And he's never going to run out on you. And he has purpose and he has plan. And that love does not expire like warranties. Jesus is the gift that we didn't know we needed and yet God provided it. And in a relationship with him, we get new purpose. We get new life. We get eternal life. And we are welcomed as children of God into an eternal family. In fact, it says in uh, Galatians chapter 3, it says, So in Christ Jesus... You are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Your faith in Jesus makes you a child of God. And only through Jesus does that happen. And that is good news. That is good news for us today. Now, when it comes to life, it all started what we believe with Adam thousands of years ago. Uh, Adam's was, uh, Adam was the first human. He was, uh, his social security number is 00000001. He's the original OG. That's original gangster, okay? Just for everybody wondering. But unfortunately, he and Eve made a decision that brought sin into the world and separated us from God. In fact, that decision brought death to us. But the Bible says that Adam may be the first human, but Jesus is the last Adam. Because this is what it says in 1 Corinthians. It says, the first man, Adam, became a living person, but, but, The last Adam, that is who? Jesus Christ is a life-giving spirit. So while Adam's decision brought destruction and death, Jesus' birth, resurrection, brought us life. And so what we have to understand is that Jesus made us a family again. He is an everlasting father. One of the reasons why Jesus carries the title as the last Adam is because God created mankind for a relationship, but sin and a decision to do what they wanted created sin, and that sin severed our relationship. And so Jesus came back, and he, he came in, and he restored, and he redeemed that relationship. And so he bridged the gap that sin created. He is an everlasting Father, And so here's what I wanted to do this morning is I I just wanted to give you a few thoughts that I've seen throughout my life that help me understand and maybe clarify everlasting father. Who is Jesus? His righteousness? How I'm adopted into his family? How I'm kept by him? And so here's the first thought we already kind of talked about it was we are adopted through Christ. We are adopted through Christ. We are adopted through Christ. Now, um, I've never adopted a child, but I did ask some of my friends who have been through that process, and it's a big process. It's big steps, and uh, it starts, right, by just figuring out, hey, we want to adopt internationally from the backyard, or like from the state right around us. Like we, um, Then you go to an adoption agency, and you fill out paperwork, and you start with classes, and 
Okay, now we have the opportunity to maybe meet a child, and they meet us, and do they like us? Do we like that child? And then the agency approves, and then you sign paperwork, and then they move in, and then life starts, and there's so many other steps in between, for sure. Now, Paul, when he talks about adoption in Ephesians, this is pretty incredible. He understood that in Roman culture, if you were adopted by a family, it would mean that your legal standing would completely change. Your legal standing would completely change. Any debt you owed, you came from a poor family, you have a long rap sheet, doesn't matter. As soon as the papers were signed, your old life was completely wiped from history. In fact, the government couldn't even bring it up anymore and throw it in your face. That person is no longer a person. You are new and you get new privileges with your new family. And what Paul wants us to understand today is in a relationship with Jesus, that's how it works with us. The old person is dead. The old person is gone. The old life is gone. Jesus has made us a new person. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 says this. It says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. He has adopted us into a new family. We have to understand that Jesus represents our and your restoration into a new family and a new purpose. And so when the enemy wants to wake you up and tells you, hey, remember your old past, remember your old mistakes. No, no, no. I've been adopted through Christ Jesus into a new family. I'm a new person with a new purpose. We're adopted through Christ Jesus. Here's the next thought is that uh, we are righteous in Christ. We are righteous in Christ. And so I wanted to use a couple of visual examples. And uh, I saw this from a pastor a long time ago. And I thought this was the best way uh, to kind of teach you guys and help you lead maybe your families and people around you. Um, Think of righteousness as a garment. Righteousness is, it, it, it's a garment, and uh, it means, righteousness means to be in right standing with God. It means everything about you morally, that, that word morally means that everything about you is in right standing with God. The way you talk, the way you walk, the way you think. When God declares you righteous, that means you are a perfect person, if you will. And I don't know about you, but I am not perfect. Can't do it. I'm going to mess up every day. And I may not say it, I may not act it out, but it may happen in my head and God knows it. So what's incredible about what God did is God said instead of putting all of the pressure on you, he's going to send his son to become righteousness and wrap you with that righteousness as a free gift. So listen to me. It's your choice to choose it if you want it. And religious leaders will tell you there's 40 steps to get this right, and it's on you to get it right. But Jesus says that is not the gospel. I came and I lived a perfect life and gave my life, and my righteousness is now wrapping you up. So when God looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees me, and you only get this righteousness through a relationship with me. He is the righteousness. And so listen to me. This is what it says in Romans chapter 5. I don't want to skip this. It says, For the sin of this one man, Adam, we already talked about this, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness righteousness for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man who? Jesus Christ. So listen to me. Jesus did it. It's done. You just have to receive it. You can keep waking up every single day wondering how you're going to solve the world's problems, but God is telling you, I've already solved it. Just receive it. And now you get to wake up every single day when you receive it and go, I'm not going to worry about anything else because I am righteous in Christ. Listen, I am the righteousness of Christ in God. I don't have to worry about this anymore. He has solved it. He's an everlasting father. And so here's the last thought for here's the last thought for the day. It's this right here. Is we are kept by Christ. 
We are kept by Christ. When you're having a rough day, I want you to remember this passage that we're going to read here in just a few moments. Um, write it down, take a picture, put it on your, your screen on your phone, put it on the dash of your car, put it on a mirror, a window, because it's going to help you through that day. So this is what it says, Jude chapter 1. It says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore, exclamation point, amen. So here's what's happening in this passage. How many of you have um, ever been like mountain climbing? Anybody? Hiking, anything like that? No? Anything? Okay, cool. Awesome. Great, awesome. Um, number one, I understand that this is not mountain climbing rope. Don't destroy my illustration, okay? Well, let's just say that it is. So when you go mountain climbing and you're a rookie and you don't, you're not clear on what to do, what they tell you to do is to take your hook, hook it to yourself, and then you're going to tether yourself to the person who knows what they're doing. And you're going to stay tethered to them. Why? Because if you don't, there's a good chance you're going to stumble. There's a good chance you're going to fall off a cliff. And so it's more important for you to stay connected to the one who is in control. So here's what I need you to know. Too many times in your life, we've lived like this. But Jesus is saying, I'm an everlasting father, and I can keep you from stumbling, but you got to stay connected to me. Because as human beings, we have a tendency to wander off and fall off cliffs. But Jesus says, I have the power to keep you from stumbling. And it's not you, but it's the power of the Spirit that is living inside of you that will keep you from stumbling because you have a tendency to wander off. But if you would stay tethered to me and connected to me, I will keep you from stumbling and we will continue to move forward. But at any moment, it is your choice to disconnect. But I would challenge you today, it's time to reconnect to the Father. It's time to reconnect and stay tethered to the Father. Dads, it's time to stay connected. Mom, it's time to stay connected. Kids, it's time to stay connected to the Father because you may be stumbling, but He's the one that says, I can keep you from stumbling. And it's not you. You can't do it. But it's the power of the Spirit living inside of you that will keep you moving forward. Why? Because I have adopted you. I put, on the, I put in the paperwork on the cross. And through me, you have a new life and a new purpose and an eternal life waiting for you with the Father. I am an everlasting Father. Last thought, Jesus offers us everlasting comfort and he shows us ever, everlasting love. Why? Because he is the everlasting Father. So I don't know where you are today. I don't know how you find yourself, where you find yourself in life. But the good news is, there is an everlasting Father who loves you. He adores you. He has a purpose for you. And he wants a relationship with you. Thousands of years ago, He came to this earth as a baby. On mission. And that was to bleed out and die on a cross. And three days later, he would resurrect from the grave so that in him, you can have new life. It only comes through him and nothing else. And so I would challenge you today, if you leave this place the same, you made that choice. Do you have an opportunity to connect today and leave change forever because you have an everlasting Father that loves you. And He doesn't change. Everything about the world changes. He does not. 
And that is scripture, that is the gospel, that is the truth. And I challenge you. I challenge you today. Make a change. Fall in love with a man, an everlasting father that is in love with you. With your head bowed and your eyes closed. Man, we've had such a great day today. Father, we are so grateful for your scripture. So thankful, God, for your words. We're so thankful that, God, you came to us as a baby on mission, and you completed that mission. God, we recognize, Jesus, you are the everlasting Father. There are people in this place today that you don't know who Jesus is, or maybe you know him, but you don't have a relationship with him. I'm asking you not to leave the same way. Maybe you're online, and you're feeling the same way. I'm asking you not to leave the same as you came in today. It's time to make a decision to reconnect to Jesus. If you're already distant, and you're saying, hey, I'm not connected. It's time to change. If you've never accepted Christ, let's make that change today. What an opportunity. And so if you're in the room and you say, I am ready to repent of my sins right now. I repent of that. And I recognize that he is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. That he is an everlasting father. That he came to this earth. That he led a perfect life. Lived a perfect life. That he hung on a cross. That he bled out for me, which is so crazy. And then he was buried and he resurrected three days later. And through him I have a new life. I want that new life. I, I recognize all of those things. I repent and turn from my sins today. And I want to accept him as my Savior. If that's you today, uh, can you just do me a favor? Can you just, just by recognizing that, me and you, can you raise your hand across the room if that's you? Say, hey, I want to accept Jesus today as high as you can get it. Come on, get it up as high as you can get it, as high as you can get it. Come on, as high as you can get it and keep it there. Several hands across the room. God, we are so grateful for new life in these people's lives that just raise their hand to accept you. We recognize, Father, that is a, 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 an acceptance of you as their Savior. And, Father, now it is on us and them as a church and them individually to, to help with the next steps and, and begin to walk in the right direction. The old life is gone. The new life is here through Christ Jesus. They have a new life. They have been adopted by you through Christ Jesus into an eternal family. And we believe right now their life is changed forever. And we are so thankful for that, Father. And for anybody in this room now, before we jump into a moment of worship, you're saying, hey, um, I need prayer. I need someone to talk to. We have a team at the the front of our our, our stage right here ready to receive you, ready to pray with you, ready to love on you. Father, as we jump into worship, one more moment of worshiping the everlasting Father. Thank you for what you've done here today. Thank you for what's happened in this service, the lives that have been changed forevermore. In your name we pray. Hey, can you stand to your feet together, church? Can we lean in and can we worship an everlasting Father? Come on.